Hi guys, this is a example program uh, written in Python, uh, which is a sort of companion to my, my little book here. Uh, and we're going to build a kind of screensaver type thing uh, in Python, uh, just to sort of uh, celebrate the release of uh, the second edition of my Python book. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy it. It's a little bit of a deviation um, from the, the current Frogger project, but uh, I hope you like it anyway. Uh, anyway. Let's get started after the fade. So in this folder, I have a single image called cover.png. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Visual Studio Code to create a Python file. Now, normally I would uh, I'd be doing this on the Raspberry Pi, but I don't have the capability of recording on a Raspberry Pi. So luckily, the great thing about Python is that you can, you can actually write it anywhere. So you can write it on the Raspberry Pi itself, uh, or you can write it inside Visual Studio Code, or even, I think Visual Studio handles it as well, or just even a text editor. So long as you have Python installed, you can do anything, anything in, in, on any machine that you want, and it works with Mac, Linux, everything. Uh, it just so happens that with the Raspberry Pi, it's great because you get Raspbian, which is their, their version of um, Debian, Debian Linux, and uh, it just comes out of the box with Python, Pygame, all that kind of good stuff installed with it. Uh, so this is just a, a little bit of a convoluted way. So if you're playing on Raspberry Pi, then you just need to type in the text in here and it'll, it'll just work. Uh, but I'm going to have to go the kind of long-winded way and have to do it through Visual Studio Code. So just a little, little bit of a kind of thing here. So anyway, uh, let's start Visual Studio Code. So this is Visual Studio Code here. I'm going to start a new file. I'm going to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit chunkier so we can sort of see the text here. Uh, but this is going to be my, my IDE for the for the purposes of this thing here. So uh, for this video anyway. So I'm going to change this to screensaver.py. And it mostly works, uh, Visual Studio. So you do get a little bit of IntelliSense, but not actually much. So um, Python is uh, a really cool language to, 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 to start with if you're just beginning. Uh, it's also my kind of go-to scripting language. I, I really like Python. Um, anyway, uh, I, I'm going to show... <laughs> I'm, waffling just now, but I'm going to show how you go about creating a Python script and how you run it. And we create a little kind of cool little program uh, in here anyway. This, by the way, is not in my book. Uh, this is actually completely separate to that. Um, so let's get started anyway. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import some extra external libraries to our script. So we use the import keyword. And we need to import Pygame. And we also need to include Sys, which is the system tools. Uh, and then we also need to um, Pygame import, uh, sorry, Pygame.locals import star. And that brings in a whole bunch of ancillary things. That's the sort of standard, most of the time, Pygame type stuff that you would want to import. Uh, you may also want to import the operating system as well, so you can get file access, that kind of good stuff. But this is a sort of bare bones type um, setup that you want. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to initialize Pygame. And the way we do that is to call pygame.init, and that initializes our Pygame. Now, because we have an init, we also have to have a quit. So we need to do pygame.quit at the bottom. And we'll come back to that later on, but that's the sort of that the last line of your program there. So initialize and then quit. Uh, we also need a clock because we want to have smooth motion. We want to um, use the the clock to sort of clip at you know we're going to use 30 frames per second. So the clock is going to make sure that we always tick at 30 frames a second. So we're going to create a clock here, uh, and we would do that is do pygame dot time dot clock. And that creates our instance of a clock class. Okay, so we initialize, we're creating a clock. The next thing we need to do is we need to be able to get in that cover image. And 
do that, we're going to use the image. We're going to use the load function of the image uh, module. So we're going to say uh, cover equals pygame dot image dot uh, load cover dot png, and that's going to load that image into memory. And then uh, we're going to leave a few bits and pieces just now. We just want to display this this image up here. So uh, right now we we haven't actually done a lot. We haven't got a, a window or anything, so we're going to sort that just now. So we're going to create a window that we can actually draw things on. And, and Pygame uses a, a an idea of a surface. So you need like a default surface to start uh, drawing anything on. So you can either call it surface, background, um, or window. I'm going to choose to call it window. Again, it's a variable name. You can call it anything you want. So I'm going to say window equals pygame dot display dot set mode and then we specify the size of the mode now the mode itself uh, the set mode function takes what's called a tuple t-u-p-l-e and a tuple is a comma separated value series of values now it's not a set of parameters you can't do one oh two four seven six eight it's actually looking for a single value here so we're going to have to wrap that inside another set of parentheses. So it kind of looks a bit weird, but that's the actual tuple there is the com is the bracket 1024 comma 178. So it's two values in one object. Uh, we're going to also going to have a running equals true, uh, and that is going to keep our program in memory. And the way we keep the program in memory is we're going to have a while loop here. So we're going to say while running. And then I've added this strange colon at the end here. And the reason why I've done that is because Python uses indentation to mark blocks. So whereas in, in C sharp you might have while running, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Uh, we don't have that in Python. What we have is we have a colon, and then the next line, you notice that because it's a Python file, Visual Studio Code knows about this, it moves it down and indents it across uh, one tab space. So there's a whole argument with tabs versus spaces. I'm just going to leave it as a default just now. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's just tabs. It looks like tabs. Oh, no, it's not spaces. Anyway, it doesn't matter for the, the purposes of this, this video. So we want to keep this running until the player presses the big X button in the corner. Uh, so we're going to say for event in pygame.event.get. So we're going to get a list of all the events. Now, when you, when you create a window, uh, you get a whole series of events, like when it moves the window, when uh, it resizes, when the player clicks on it, all that kind of stuff. And also when the player clicks the X, the close button. So we want to trap that event. Uh, and the way we do that is we're gonna do, we're gonna cycle through all the events that we've been given in this frame. And then we're gonna say, okay, which one of them is the quit event? And when it's quit, we set the running to be false. So we're gonna say if event.type equals quit, and again, we get that bracket, we get that uh, colon there because we're indenting again. We're going to say running equals false. Okay, and that's all we need to do for the the sort of bare bones of this program. We don't need to do anything else. We can hit F5. I can click on Python run, and it will quite happily build it and run it, and we'll end up with a, a blank window. So that's our blank window there. So I'll close that and you can see that we can click on close and then we can continue. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to draw that cover on the screen. So I'm going to move to uh, the same line as the for loop there. So you see that that line there, that vertical line, that's important because it has to be inside this indentation. And I'm going to say window.fill and then I'm going to specify another tuple which is going to be 0, 0, 0 which is black, so it's it's going to fill it with a black color. And then I'm going to say window dot, and then we use this funny function called blit. Now what blit does is it takes another image 
and it smushes it, it draws it onto uh, another surface. So we have this cover image here. So I'm going to say blit cover, and then I'm going to specify the position I want the cover to be drawn at, which is going to be 0, 0. And again, that's another tuple. So we've got this other tuple here. Uh, and I should probably also, while I'm down here, um, do uh, clock dot tick 30. So that will then tick the screen every 30, um, 30 times a second. Sorry. So again, hit F5, click on Python, and uh, we don't get the cover. Why don't we get the cover? Uh, I'll tell you why we don't get the cover because we don't do pygame.display.update because the, the system works on a double buffer system so when you draw something to it, it draws it to the back buffer and then when you do the update it flips the front buffer to the back buffer uh, and then does the then whatever's in the back buffer you get to see as a user so now we have our Pygame uh, cover over here. So what we want to do is we want to bounce it across the screen. So right now everything is kind of hard coded. So this path here, um, or this, this value here is 0, 0. We want that to be x and y coordinates. So let's just change that to x and y. Uh, we also need to define those values as well. So let's say x equals 0 y equals zero uh, and again we can run this and, and just prove that that is going to work um, but we also want to move it across the screen and we want to move it across the screen in such a way that it's smooth so we don't want it to uh, it doesn't need to it has it has to be uh, device independent so if you have a slower raspberry pi for example like one of the, the uh, version 2s or uh, even the version 3 now compared to the version 4 uh, then you want it to run at the same speed so I'm going to say that the the speed along the x-axis is going to be 200 pixels per second and I'm going to say the speed along the y-axis is going to be 150 pixels per second and so I'm now going to say down here that x equals x plus something but I can't just do SX because that SX is going to be enormous. It's going to be 100. It's going to be 200 pixels, and I don't want to know that because it's it's actually this is only going to be one thirtieth of a second. So it's thirtieth of a second times 200. Uh, and similarly, the Y is going to be the same as well. So it's going to be the the speed multiplied by something else. Luckily, this tick returns the number of milliseconds since the last time it was called. So I can say delta equals that, but it's in milliseconds. I want to get it in a fraction. So I'm going to divide it by a thousand because that's, it's a thousand, it's a millisecond. So it's divided by a thousand. And then I'm going to use that delta to determine the position. Okay. Uh, delta, I'll save that. And now when we run it, uh, we should see everything moving and there we go it's moving down the screen but unfortunately when it gets to the end there it just moves off the screen which is not good so now what we need to do is we need to keep it inside the bounds of the screen so we need to determine where it's going to hit the screen now that image is 256 pixels by 388 pixels so i'm going to say if the y value is greater than uh, sorry, the y value plus 388, because that's the height of the the um, the image, is greater than the window dot get height. I'm going to say s s y equals s y times negative one, which means it's going to get go there and it's going to bounce off the screen. It's going to bounce back up the screen. And so now we run it. Um, it's going to get to the bottom of the screen and it's going to bounce like that. So we're nearly there. But I also want to make sure that it bounces when 
I just move this away put it here I also want to make sure that it, if it bounces when it gets to the top of the screen so I want to say or y is less than zero we want to bounce it back down the screen and then we want to do the same thing for x so I want to say if x plus 256 is greater than window dot get width or x is less than zero sx equals sx times minus one so I'll just bounce back and forth and we run it and we end up with this so we end up with a nice little screensaver that bounces around the screen until we hit that little red X button over there well thank you very much for watching that video I, I know it's in a big giant advert for this book but uh, I thought I'd, I'd sort of introduce people again to sort of Python and and um, it is the fastest programming fastest growing programming language according to Stack Overflow uh, and it's becoming very very important uh, TensorFlow for example uses Python uh, almost exclusively I think there's a couple other uh, languages it's supporting now but the the graph for Python is like through the chart so if you want to, to pick up a book uh, on, or if you're considering picking up a book on Python may I suggest my humble little title here um, anyway other books are available but uh, I, I I think this one's uh, I think this one's really neat I'm really proud of this one to be honest um, but anyway, if you liked this video, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. Let me know in the comments below. Again, I know it's a big giant advert. Uh, that's why I've removed all monetization from from this as well. So uh, I just, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really chuffed for this this one. Um, so anyhow, uh, <laughs> normal service will soon be resumed and all that kind of stuff, and I'll go back to doing the the Frogger uh, conversion I, I started in Mono Game. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.